Dr. Kamat is a fellow diabetes of the is a fellow of the diabetes in India and has the fellowship in diabetology from Apollo Hospital and Royal Liverpool Academy in UK. He has several awards under his belt. Young Scholar Award in, Di in Diabetology in 2017 and Diabetes Awareness Initiative Award in 2020. Just to name a few. He is an active member of the IMA and also the Honorable Secretary of RSSDI Goa Chapter. Friends, please put your hands together for Dr. Tejas Kanda, the keynote speaker for today, and he will be talking on a hot topic, diabetes.
would be identifying people who are at risk. Second important step would be to identify diabetes early. Now, somebody who's, who has got diabetes, many a times it's asymptomatic. They won't know that they have diabetes. So, to do the right test at the right time, to know the symptoms which, which could be uh, a, a symptom of diabetes. So, second would be to identify those who have diabetes early, early detection. And third would be appropriate management with the help of diet, exercise, medicines, all everything put together. So let me touch on all these aspects in a bit detail today. So coming to early, uh, early identifying people at risk. So we should know who are and, and today since we have all gathered here, it's not only Navimar, it's not only IME or RSDI Alliance. I think each one sitting here has to be a soldier in this fight against diabetes. You should be aware that somebody is at risk. So it starts by identifying people at risk. So tomorrow if you are a soldier, you should know that somebody has a risk. So what are these risk factors that I am talking about? One important risk factor is family history. Somebody whose father, mother, first uh, relative, first, first uh, 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 brother, sister is diabetic, that person has got higher risk of getting diabetes in the future. Very important risk factor is overweight and obesity. Most of us sitting here are overweight or obese and that's the reason uh, because of overweight or obesity, risk of diabetes also increases. As Dr. Dumaskar mentioned, physical inactivity. We go to office, we park our bikes near the store, get everything on mobile, home delivered. So there is lack of physical activity today. So, some, some certain medical condition itself increases risk of getting diabetes. Heart disease, somebody who already had a heart attack or a stroke or underwent bypass or angioplasty, he is at risk of getting diabetes in the future. Somebody who has had high blood pressure or, or is on treatment for high blood pressure with some medicines, Somebody who has got high cholesterol or has been treatment for high cholesterol. These are some of the associated risk factors for which predispose to getting diabetes in future. Women who have polycystic ovaries, this is another thing which is coming up very commonly now. Or somebody who has non-alcoholic fatty liver. I must, I'm sure last few months or years we have read multiple articles in uh, uh, newspapers about fatty liver, non-alcoholic. Somebody who is non-alcoholic still having fatty liver. These are some of the associated conditions which increase risk of getting diabetes in future. So it starts by identifying somebody as at, who, is, who is at risk. So we should know what are the risk factors or, of, of getting diabetes. Now once we have identified that yes, me or somebody has this risk factors present, what do we do about this risk factors? There are two things that we do to address this risk factors. One is awareness. Telling somebody that you are at risk, you can get diabetes in the next 3 years, 4 years, 5 years, if you don't do something about it today. I remember my own cousin, or we were at a family function, and she was obese or she was overweight, and I was, she was walking and I was walking behind her. I just noticed some darkening of her skin, which in medical terms is called ethanthosis. Now this is one of the risk factors, and that, this means that insulin is not able to work in your body. It gives this blackish discoloration behind the neck. I told her, see your father is diabetic, we have high prevalence in our own um, uh, family and this is something I am sure in the next 5 years and she was just 20 right? and I told her by 25 you will become diabetic if you don't do something about it. I am proud today at just one word of awareness and she has lost 20 kg's weight and that darkening has completely disappeared. So I told her next 15 years you won't get diabetic. So that starts with awareness, telling somebody that you are at risk put some fear into his mind and they start changing the lifestyle. Second aspect is timely test, early detection, routine screening like tests which have been conducted by Dr. Senso, Navimar and other foundations. Timely detection with, by, uh, by conducting diabetes screening tests. So who should be screened? Anybody who is overweight or obese and has any other risk factor that I talked about Two risk factors that person should be screened, irrespective of age. I am talking about adults beyond 18 years of age. Anybody who has died, pre diabetes should undergo screening every year, once in a year. And everybody, irrespective of risk factors, after the age of 45 should be screened at least once in one to two years. So these are the global guidelines about screening so that we can identify people who are at risk and detect diabetes early. Now many a times people escape screening due to multiple reasons and they tend to land up directly with diabetes. The second aspect of conquering diabetes is identifying or detecting early detection of diabetes patients. So for which everybody should be aware of what are the symptoms of diabetes. If you 
end of getting diabetes, what, how do you recognize that somebody has diabetes? So there are four cardinal symptoms of diabetes that everybody should be aware of. We call it polyuria, which is excessive urination, poly, uh, polydipsia, excessive thirst, polyphagia, excessive hunger, and unexplained weight loss. Somebody is not controlling diet, no physical activity, but still undergoing weight loss, 4 kgs, 5 kgs lost in the last 2-3 months. Suspect diabetes is one of the conditions you might say. Ask them to just go to a nearby health center or any uh, laboratory for simple fasting or experience a test which will tell them whether they have diabetes or not. These are some of the important symptoms. There are so many other symptoms which a patient can present to some friend or some other doctor. And you should be aware of those. What are those? So, private party infections. Many uh, young adults are nowadays coming to their family with private party infections. What happens is when sugars go beyond 200 in the blood, the body starts throwing sugars through the urine. And because sugars in there in the urine, you tend to get fungal infections at a private part. So very common nowadays in young adults who are coming with diabetes. Blurring of vision. Again, high sugars goes to the eye, it causes changes in the lens and you tend to get blurring in your vision. Delayed milling of food. I'm sure many of you are aware of this. Numbness or tingling sensations in your hands and feet. These are some of the other symptoms. Many a times patients go to orthopedic doctor with a frozen shoulder, that is one common symptom of diabetes. So some of this, if somebody in your vicinity, your family or your neighborhood is describing, telling you sometimes that I am getting the symptoms, just tell them go to the nearby lab or a cell center and get yourself tested for a sugar. And if they have high sugar, they can consult the right doctor for, for the appropriate treatment. So second important aspect was identifying people at risk. The, the identifying the symptoms at right time and early detection. But unfortunately, 50% of the patients don't even know that they have diabetes because they are asymptomatic. And they unfortunately end up with major complications. What are the complications? So it's a deadly disease. It can affect each and every system of, of your body. There's two to four times higher risk of a heart attack or a stroke in a diabetes patient as compared to non-diabetes patients. It is one of the leading causes of blindness. If sugar is very high, there could be retinopathy in which the, uh, uh, the inner layer of the eye is got damaged and there is a sudden bleeding leading to blindness. It is one of the leading causes of amputations because blood flow to the legs is affected, there is gangrene, there are infections which are difficult to treat or heal and they require amputation to oppose the legs. If you go to any kidney ward or patients undergoing dialysis, Almost 50% of the patients uh, in a dialysis will be a diabetic because of diabetic kidney disease. So some of the daily complications of diabetes. But this is not to scare you. This is just to make you aware that if, if this disease is not controlled well, it can cause serious complications. There are two sides of a diabetes patient's point, the positive and negative. The negative is it can make you live 10 years earlier if you don't take care of your children. The positive side of it is that it can make you live 7 years more as compared to a non-diabetes patient if you take good care of your diabetes. And that is why you will ask me, in spite of getting diabetes, how can I live 7 years more compared to non-diabetes? Because non-diabetes patients probably won't be doing routine checkups. They might be not, not seeing a doctor for 5 years, 10 years, until something happens. They might even know that they have high blood pressure or cholesterol or some other problems. But a diabetes patient was uh, uh, diligent and does routine checkups, controls diet, exercise, studies have shown because of his uh, uh, sincere efforts, he, he can be even seven years more as compared to somebody who doesn't even have diabetes. So you have to decide which side you are to be for others around us to be. So as uh, our uh, CM once upon a time is famous statement, diabetes is Bhupachi Karajna. Okay, so it's not to scare you, Bhupaji Matthew Karajna. I always say diabetes is like, like a life partner. Once you get diabetes, you always remain a diabetic. Very rarely, sometimes you can reverse, but that's also temporary. It's like a temporary divorce after two, three years, you will come back to harm. It's like a life story. It's like a life partner. But in this life story, whether you, are, you will be happy or sad with complications depends on how you will treat your life partner. If you treat her with respect, she won't harm you at all. You will live happily with diabetes. But if you neglect her, she is a bad life partner. She will damage each and every system of your life. She won't stick quite like any other life partner at home. She is a deadly life partner. So it depends on how you treat your diabetes. So coming to the last part of conquering diabetes, how do you manage diabetes? 
only four simple ways, pillars of diabetes management. It's nothing complicated. Disease is very much complicated. Management is very simple. Diet control, exercise, taking medicines on time, and regular doctor visits. Simple. There's no perfect science. Diet, the doctor must have everybody touch upon diet. Let me go into little more details because once the patient gets diabetes, everybody around him will prescribe their own diet. And patient goes mad, what to eat, what not to eat. If you eat fruit, if you eat sugar, if you eat rice, if you eat it, is my question. They are frustrated and that leads to diabetic depression. This is one entity, diabetic depression because they have plenty of complications. Everybody tells you are a kidney worthy. Medicine is not worthy, insulin is not worthy, insulin is not worthy, insulin is not worthy. So there are many myths about medicine, diet, everything. So let me clear. So my advice to my patients, don't make it complicated. Keep it simple, sensible and practical. I tell my patients in my clinic they have to avoid only three things. Sugar, anything sweet. Sugar, jaggery and honey. Even jaggery is as almost as bad as sugar. So jag sugar, jaggery, honey you must avoid. Anything which contains maida, breads, pow, so common breakfast for our own patients. Pow. I'm sorry if somebody is a baker, your business will reduce after my talk. But that is one thing you must avoid. Breads, biscuits, cakes, maida items. And highlight deep fried, samosas, puris, butter butters, all that is fried outside, junk, at your work. Only three things, sweets, maida items and deep fried items. Rest everything you consume within limits. Like a simple thali, one chapati, small katori rice, katori not katora, less rice. Two bhaji, dal, salad, curd, fish to pieces, shallow fry with less home oil. Everything within limits, keep it balanced. Don't have potato bhaji. But in bhaji there is potato have it? No problem. Don't have sweets, but once in a while wedding somebody will little ice cream, fine, just be here and there, have it. But don't do weddings daily. Within <laughs> limits. So don't make it complicated, keep it simple. Now, like Dr. Dumaskar was mentioning, another problem with our Indian diet and especially Goan diet is the amount of food that we eat, I get surprised, I get what, what one patient was fasting is very good after 90, 100, after food is 300. So what do you eat? And the chapati of the rice, the chapati, how many? So sad, I look like this. Adyoshua, he is trying to fool himself, not me by saying Adyoshua. I told him we don't have African tawas, our tawas are so big, so small, you can't make more than this much size. So this three, four chapatis come from our ancestors. This is an agrarian diet. This is a diet, three chapatis, this much of rice is to be had. Somebody was into agriculture. My father, my grandfather was into agriculture. They didn't have vehicles to travel from one part to another. They used to walk 10 kilometers away. So you have only two options. Reduce your diet by that much portion. How much portion the activity is less as compared to your ancestors. Or sell your vehicle, sell your, give up your job and go into the fields. You have only two options. Our requirement is not more than one hour, one and a half chapati. Or one small portion of rice. That much. So it's not about rice, it's about how much you eat. Our portion size is too heavy for the energy requirements that we have to eat. So that was about diet. Activity, as Dr. Dumaskar mentioned, no physical activity. Cricket, after cricketing, the club will video came in. Nobody has even touched a bat and ball today. They are playing football and cricket on video things. That is the level of physical activity our kids have. So encourage them to go outside, to play, to enjoy their lives. So that they will live happily without diabetes. So that is the that is the crux of the matter. So diet, exercise, any amount of any type of exercise, be it walking, yoga, cycling, swimming, whatever you enjoy, zumba, whatever you do, half an hour per day. Dr. Celso is also inviting me to investing, I didn't know, but somebody told me today. I tell you, invest half an hour of your 24 hours into health. Take out that time, like how you do an FD or SIP, just half an hour into health, fixed deposit of your time. Nothing else during your time. 
it is one of the way you will have to live with diabetes. So coming back, diet control, exercise, take your medicines on time, do your regular phys physician visits. Okay, if your doctors are there to help you, give you right advice, put you back on track if you are off track, so that is equally important. So diabetes, you pachi karazna, provided you take good care of yourself. So with that, I think I am able to give you sufficient information that is probably required for you to conquer diabetes as my talk was and also allow you to live happily with diabetes. So thank you very much.